Welcome to Narrabut at Jamesville. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. I've now got to map out the ceiling because before I put the panels down, I've got to make sure all the lamps are probably um, marked out and in the correct positions. I've also got to make sure that all the battens are right and in the right positions to put all the ceiling panels up. I also need to run all the cabling for all the lighting looms and the switches. Right, I have tidied up the back of the boat here because I need to work out kind of battery placement. Um, they're either going to go there under the kind of the steps which are going to come out here, the return companion way, or it's going to go underneath there. But I'd rather go that side for trimming purposes because the boat is still massively on the wonk. Um, but, but I need to turn my attention to the two-way switch cable, which is going to be this stuff here. So I have identified that side with blue that side with white and the same at the other end of it which goes all the way to the uh, cleat at the front now I need to get this through conduit and then get that up next to this one here and get it in the roof right I'm getting through this conduit as you can see I'm going on the going through at the blunt end I'm doing small bits of conduit because it's making it kind of manageable and then just kind of getting through it. So I reckon I'm about halfway now. Right, this is the length of cable in its conduit. Now I need to work out what side the switch should be on. So when coming into the boat, obviously I'm gonna need the switch on the most like, accessible space. And I'm thinking it's gonna be on starboard side because these double doors, even though they're going to be changed, same with on Rob's one, it's the starboard door that opens on its own and then you'd have to unlock that one. So you wouldn't want it on that side because sometimes you just want to walk in, turn the light on and go in. So I think the switch needs to be on this side. So I'm going to have to run the cable. I might be able to get another one through there. If not, I'm going to have to run it down there and across, but I'm going to drill it through all these buttons again. And the same thing applies for the uh, stern entrance. I'm going to want to, this is the door that opens kind of first. So I'm going to want the switch on that side. So I'd have to open both things. And also that's going to be electrics panels. So there's going to be a whole load of stuff there. This is just the switches for the central lights, which are going to be uh, up to the dinette. And then again, in the bedroom, I'm not going to, these are not going to control the central lights in this kind of space here, which is gonna be another room, and then the bathroom, they're gonna be independent. But so from front and back, you'll be able to turn it on and off from the main kind of cabin lights. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put it on that side there, which means I can run this conduit along these battens here. I've just noticed that baton isn't there. So I'll quickly do that. Right, that's done. Now I can drill the holes all the way through and feed the conduit down. I've kind of cleared the channel now, just need to kind of level it up a bit. Not that it matters much. Um, there's a few tricky spots like this where there is a bit of a timber missing, but it's not going to cause too much problem. It's just going to have to go, it just goes through that to get it away from the actual uh, ceiling lining. So it'll be fine. So just go through and drill all of these now and then bring the switch down to the top here. So I'll obviously have some excess, but my plan is not to have anything on that wall. So uh, maybe like have it mirrored or something like that, give the illusion of space, but obviously that's gonna be the way in. So I'm not gonna want anything there, but a switch there, I can't get behind that board. So I'm probably gonna have the switch mounted right at the top, which is where I want it anyway, because then you won't see any cable.
Right, I've got my excess at both ends now. I need to test it, see how it works. So for that, I need two switches. These are one gang two-way switches. Um, I need two lights and a power source. Right, so on these switches, there are three terminal points. Uh, they're all called L1, L2, and a live. So on this setup, I've got my blue line going into L1, and then my white cable, or the one with the white sticker on it, is going into L2. And the same thing has to happen at the fore end of the boat. And then up here at the other end of the boat, I've got exactly the same thing. So the blue one going into L1, the white one going into L2. Right, let's put this to the test. I've got the power source on this one. Obviously L1 and L2 are connected. And right at the other end is the light. So if I flick this switch here, well, that light should go on. Oh, hang on, I've got to turn it on first. On the breaker, here we go. Right. Here we go, five, four, three, two, one. Hey. Now if I go up that end, I should be able to turn it off. Happy days. Right, I've come across a problem which I didn't really think about when I was laying this, uh, and that is the flue position for the diesel stove is going to be in this one here. So I'm going to have to basically remove this uh, conduit and shimmy around it so I give it a nice wide berth. Well, it's totally ruined the nice straight line I had, but it will stop my stove burning through all of my cables. So it was worth it in the end. Um, so now I need to put in the other line of cables running down, which is gonna hold all the lamps. So at this point, ceiling design and where the cables are gonna go comes into play. Um, the ceiling is going to be in boards going this way. So it's obviously an eight foot by four foot board. So it's going to be going this way. It doesn't reach both sides, obviously. Um, and therefore it means that the trim, which will be on the side walls covering the eight foot boards, um, where the battens are there to clamp them in place on both sides, um, it means that they'll all match up. But therefore, I'm gonna need some kind of way of securing the boards in that void there, because um, there, won't be any, there won't be any way for it to kind of secure in place. Obviously trim will work, but if the board's long, it's gonna sag in the middle. So um, the way I'm gonna do it is halfway, I'm gonna have a bit of trim going across, which is okay, because I think there is a batten halfway. But on this end here, and it's other, place in the boat is exactly the same where the end of the board is going to meet there's going to need to be something in the roof lining to buy into so I can secure it in so what I'm going to have to do instead of doing batten side to side I'm going to do them uh, fore aft um, and then I'll obviously be able to position them so I can secure it in but it'll mean that it will take into account well, I won't need to take into account the camber of the roof because there'll only be thin strips. Right, so I've screwed this into the central point there that I can spray foam behind it. So I've got something for the ceiling to buy onto in the central position. Um, so then the trim is all gonna line up. So the seam is, will, be, will be around there in line with that. So that's the uh, reason why I've done that. Uh, so I need to do this now throughout the boat. So I need to do one here as well. Actually, no, because this one can attach onto that one. So that's okay. So this is the only one I need for the first board. Right, so the first board comes up to there. The second board comes up to here. And so therefore I'm gonna need another cross batten going across there much like I've done with that one there uh, so when the boards meet there's something for it to bite into there right I've now got these centrally positioned board edge battens all through the boat but 
example, what I'm thinking now is to put in some more. You see, what I've done is I've marked up here where the lights and the boards are gonna go. So light, trim, light, end of board. And it's the same pattern all the way through. So um, I've worked out basically just to keep all these areas here where the lights are gonna be, just to make sure, you know, I'm not trying to put a lamp into something like that, basically. So I've got a nice void behind it for it all. But it does mean on the bits where the trim is, uh, this one here is okay, because I can put the trim straight into there. But to keep the contour of it, there are bits where there isn't any. This one here, this trim's okay. Um, this one here is gonna be all right. This one here, for example, though, there's gonna be trim here and really nothing for it to buy into. So I'm gonna put in some more battens going this way on some of these voids just to give the roof or the ceiling lining some proper shape. But before I do that, I need to lay the rest of the conduit uh, and the cables. So I can't have anything around here because that's where, uh, that's gonna be hot basically. So I need to avoid any cables there. So no cables can run four rafts in that void around here. Um, but there's loads, there's loads of room in the ceiling for it. So that's where the switch is, but the main run of lights is gonna be coming down the middle because where the bits of trim match up and cover the seam, I'll be able to access the connections there. So if there's any faults in the ceiling wiring, I will be able to get access to it. Right, so first up, I need to bring in another positive cable to here to join the L1 and L2 for the switch. Uh, there's literally no room in that one, so I'm gonna have to bring another bit of conduit in here. It's gonna come off here, and then it's gonna go in the central position all the way down the boat. So I'm gonna have to basically uh, drill a whole load of holes through all of this stuff to get it down there. Um, but it's gonna be kind of daisy chaining all the way down because of the, uh, the Wago connections. Right, I'm going about now putting in the lamp connections uh, for the central kind of line of cabling. Uh, I've drawn out where all the lamps are gonna go on the ceiling, so I've just gotta make sure that my connections are kind of somewhat near there. So when the ceiling goes on, I've got a bit of poke those through. You see there, I've got the extra one for the positive and the negative there to take the cable in from there. And then this positive neg just keep going down and I'll split it off and use those Wagos on each one, all the way down to the boat. Right, I'm kind of spray foaming as I go to keep the tension in the cable. So I've kind of got up to, uh, where am I up to kind of, just beyond the dinette. So these lights are going to the end of the dinette so that's the last lamp there. So I've got a few more to go. And then it breaks, no lamps through the little bedroom and the bathroom. And it continues again into the bedroom. And then the end of the lamps joins up with the positive on there. Right, that is the end of the dinette and galley lights. Now this is going to be, uh, this is the last lamp. So from here, it's just gonna go straight to the first lamp in the bedroom. Right, and then I get the cable that I've made, and that goes from this point here, all the way to the front line. Right, everything's connected up, albeit obviously temporarily. Um, so the last lamp here, so the negative is going into well, that's essentially gonna be a buzz bar, but that's the nav light negative. And then the positive goes into the switch. Right, now I've wired in the switch here at the other end. So I've got the 
power lead going from the breaker to the switch. Obviously L1 and L2 are still in place. Now I'm just gonna put a light here in the galley and then I can test it all. Right, so here is the first test in situ. Uh, so I've got one lamp dangling there. I don't know if you can see it against uh, in the middle there. And I've got one lamp dangling there. So if I turn this on, there we go, the lamps are on. And then if I turn the switch on here, they should both turn off. Happy days. And then the switch here should do the same, obviously. That's a right result. And the good thing about using these Wagos is that when you finish with that one, just unclip them from the thing and out it pops. Well, easy. Right, so um, these are gonna be similar to the lamps I, I use in the ceiling. Um, I just gotta pin all this stuff up now and then kind of neaten up all the conduit and continue spray foaming all this section. I've done the front bit just to kind of keep it all rigid and in place. So that's all pretty good. That can go. Happy days. All right, that can go. I'm glad I'm paying attention to the finish now because knowing where the trim goes and everything like that, it all kind of comes back to having the boards in the right place and all the seams matching up and then I get symmetry on both sides which is something which is blindingly obvious when you go on side Rob's boat is that that's exactly how it's been done so um, I'd like to kind of get the same kind of level of finish on this and that is obviously starting now so um, and I'm glad I'm using these Wagos and the conduit makes it much easier rather than trunking and those other connectors I use on slow patrol um, next thing I need to do is basically put through all the main lighting looms now. So there's going to be a separate one for the galley, dinette, separate one for the bedroom, separate one for the bathroom, and then this bedroom here. So they're all going to be basically wired down that side there. They're going to move around the stove. Um, and they're all going to be at two foot intervals like these ones, but they're going to be staggered. So it should kind of give a quite a nice spread of light. That's what I'm hoping for. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.